Good evening and welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. Well, the All Ordinaries Index is looking quite exciting after last week's rise, so will the rise last? We'll answer that in just a few minutes. Tonight, we aim to help you make sense of the current market and we'll get into our take on the Australian stock market and where it's headed. For our main topic in tonight's show, we'll get into the top 10 ASX growth stocks to buy in 2024. First up tonight, we'll share our hot stock tip for the week. So sit back and relax. Tonight will be jam-packed as we answer your emails, take your phone calls and give you the answers to some of the important questions around the stock market. Hello and welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. Tonight, we're gonna to cover several very interesting stocks, including Liberty, CSL, Fortescue, Macquarie, and so many more. I'm Dale Gillam, your host for tonight, and joining me is Janine Cox, and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Well, good evening. I hope, like me, that everyone's getting into the festive spirit. Tonight, I'm excited to help you stuff your stock market stockings with my top 10 ASX growth stocks to buy in 2024. So stay tuned as we'll get into that and more very soon. But first, we need to get into this week's hot stock tip. Well, we do, don't we? So on your screen right now is your favourite stock to bang on about, it's Kogan. Kogan is an interesting one, isn't it? Well, it is. I mean, it just got mm -hmm. absolutely pummeled when Correct. it corrected recently, but um, mm -hmm. looking at it now, what, what would you say? I don't know. It's I thought exciting, you were going to keep going. It? So, <laughs> it's exciting. I'd just like to know, you bang on it about it for people buying Australian. Well, actually, I can't take credit for this one because mm -hmm. one of our analysts actually gave me this one to put oh, up one of our One of our, um, one of our lovely just... analysts, Emma. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So she banged on about it. Okay. She did. Well, I mean, I, you bang on about it about people buying Australian supporting Australia rather than Amazon. But I mean, Kogan buy a lot of their stuff from China, don't they? But anyway, so currently down about 1.49% at the moment. No dividend yield on the stock. It has a range between 3 and $7 there, as mm. you can see. One year return doing really well, 58.08% uh, um, return, obviously. On a smaller side, not a big, big, big stock, yeah. but not too bad at $540 million. I'm just looking at the chart. We're going to go that into Optima in a section, but... Uh, a second, but again, as we all know, it's an e-commerce website where you can buy pretty much all sorts of stuff. Mm. Although I did look on the website the other day to look at buying some TVs for our studio. At least it's and listed. And only had Kogan brands. Well, at least <laughs> at least it's listed on the Australian market. That's important. Well, it is listed on the Australian Not market. Not like Amazon. Let's keep moving. Where's Optima? There we go. So bringing up the chart. So let's go and have a look at the monthly chart from here. What I love about this stock is because this massive, massive fall. Okay, you thinking, can you just stop there for a second? Okay. Put the brakes on. Can you explain why you love that? Well, because there's certain levels of resistance and support a stock will have, mm. and there are certain levels that are stronger than others. Now, mm -hmm. this has hit this massive level. If you look there at that um, low there, $2, uh, what is it, $2.66. Yep. And you look at that one, $2.61. Pretty close. So within five cents. Mm -hmm. Now, some people go, oh, okay, that's interesting. But how often does that happen where you see stocks do that, where they get so close within cents of a previous Well, our low? students would probably say in it to a reasonable frequency. Hmm. And then obviously afterwards, it's just really moved up quite nice and steady. Come back into this low through into October. Again, to be expected, you know, you get three mm. or four months up and two or three months down. Well, that's right nice now it's looking trend. good. Mm, it's a nice little trend, but it's still flat, which means, you know, to an extent, which means there's still an opportunity there to yeah. make a return out of it. Oh, yeah, mm. absol absolutely. Because you look at this stock, you've had some big, big moves out of this stock. So, right now, so what's the like percentage it. upside from where it is now to From where potential? it is now, um, for me, I can see from that first level of resistance, we're talking 94% to that one, and then about 57%. 58 to there, so I love That's it. That's exciting, the isn't it? So mm. get your Excellent. chops into that one. Get your chops into that one. Weren't you supposed to say something festive? Oh, 
It okay, is Christmas. Ring your bells. Jingling. Jingling a ding. Something like that. Well, that's it for our weekly hot stock tip. Shortly we'll get into our topic for the night. But before we do, right now it is your opportunity to get involved in the show and have your questions answered. Remember, we prioritise phone callers. So call now on 03 9290 That's 03 9290 Or you can text your question to the number on your screen. Now, the first caller into the show right now gets a free copy of my book, Accelerate Your Wealth. It's your money, your choice. So pick up your phone right now and dial 03929099988. Do that right now. Why you do that tonight is the first Tuesday in the month, which means we're going to take a look at the Australian stock market. So let's get into the chart of the All Lord News Index. Now, the exciting thing about that book that you just showed everybody is it is Christmas, so it's a good time to get little presents like that in the stocking, isn't it? Ho, ho, ho. Yes. I haven't been able to get you to wear a Santa's hat yet. No, no, no. <laughs> I'll keep trying. All right. Um, this is the All Ordinaries Index that you can see on your screen yep. there. And you're probably thinking, well, what is all of this that Janine's got there on the chart? Well, it's top secret. Only to me, to, to our viewers, <laughs> then yep. they've got a promise they're not allowed to tell anybody else. That's right. So let's have a look again at the chart. And okay. we can see there that back, if we go back to 87, we can see the market rose mm -hmm. about 465% to the GFC peak there. Now, at the moment, if we look at where our market is, it's only at about 161% from the global financial crisis low that we had. No, there that's, a G that's a GFC. That, that's a GFC. That is the global financial crisis. Yeah, that is. Yeah, March. That's what I said, didn't March, I? <laughs> yep. See, I've got March to stop interrupting you. That's what you're telling yeah, me. Don't put your foot in your mouth again. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, you can see there that we've, as I said, we went up 161%. Now, I want to ask the question, is it reasonable for our market to trade up 10 to 20 per cent over a couple of years? <laughs> Seriously? Absolutely. You know, it's reasonable, isn't it? So if we look at what it's done before, first of all, um, through here, we can see that was That's about 51, 50 per cent. So we can see similar sort of percentage returns through these rises here. Mm -hmm. And if we if we measure off the low at this bottom here, and I'll just compare this to where I've got my target. So there's 20, there's what, 30 Something like percent off that. It's all hidden by all the bars. So 50, 50 odd percent would put us even through my first target. So let's just see. And we end up closer to the 10,000 point mark. So that's why I've got those blue lines. You know, it's not really that top secret after all, is it? So about 50 percent takes us up to around 10,000 points, which is a nice round number. So I'll just get rid of that for now. But I'm expecting that our market, you know, we just need it to get through this high here, which is the August peak. I'll just grab this and so you can see a bit more clearly. You can see those blue lines there back in August. There was a high in July there and one in August. The high is around 7689. So provided the market gets back through there, I think we're heading towards 9,000 and 10,000 points over, mm. over time. So as soon as we see that, we can all celebrate. That's that's the thing that's really going to bring some cheer, isn't it? Well, once we see well, it that is, move. but it's not going to do it in the next two weeks, probably. But we're going to. I think the market is moving up. No Santa rally that big. Well, you know, Santa rally usually means Santa really. Usually, Santa rallies is like a couple of percent or something, isn't it? Yeah, Santa rally is not even worth looking at. But I think yeah. we are going to rally through from now. I think the market mm. is more bullish right now mm -hmm. than bearish, and I just think once it gets through those highs, like you said, I think nothing's going to stop it moving up to that nine thousand points. Yeah, so and it's I good. To, it. It's good to look back in time and see what's what the potential is. Because imagine if our market went up four hundred percent from the GFC low. Mind boggles, doesn't it? Anything's My possible. mind boggles all the time with you, <laughs> Janine. No worries. Well, that is it for our thoughts on the Australian stock market. Before we get into the first email, remember to get your email questions answered live on air in next week's show, which is our last one for the year. You must send your questions to info@wealthwithin.com.au. Now let's get into our first question. Okay, Janine, our first email is from Adam. And Adam says, G'day, Dale and Janine. I've been watching your show for about 12 months now and find it quite entertaining. Many thanks for all your work. Um, I'm interested in the stock LFG or Liberty Financial Group because I believe in the fundamentals over at least the next one to two years. However, this stock seems to be unpopular with most pundits at the moment. I thought I'd look at the chart to settle the difference. It appears that it's bottomed out and been consolidating under resistance for a little while. 
Now, as very much a novice, though, I asked myself, is it showing any signs of breaking out into a new trend? I would love your personal perspectives about this stock. Best regards, Adam. I love the question because whenever all the pundits are saying negative stuff, that means buy to me, generally. That's right. Now, he's actually asked a question, yeah? but he, I wonder what he answered when he asked himself that question. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Do you want to ring him? I know. Um, he could ring in if you like, Adam. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah? So looking at this stock, I think it's an interesting choice, and possibly yeah. he's right. It may have actually bottomed. And just I'm on the monthly chart here just to give you an idea, and, and I probably suggest that it's not necessarily worth going to the weekly chart at this point, but I've just... I'm just drawing a little bit of a shape across this bottom bar because that was really the turning point of what happened, but it's just done nothing. Opens and closes all mm. around the same sort of levels there. And this weird sort of sideways move, it could be a reversal that we've seen there. Um, it's a half, half the months up, half of the months down. It's just indecision. But because it's closing down low in December, we st it's still mm. unclear. It could just as easily take out the low in September. We've really got to wait and see if it gets above this high 420. I think, you know, it could head to more like $5, yeah, it's just in a, I think it's in mm. an accumulation phase. So, I mean, what's the, what's the weekly chart looking at? No different, really. It's no, it's no, I mean, yeah, I understand that. It's no different, but you're looking at it, it's... Well, it's look not at that a super volume. liquid stock, is it, though? Yeah, somebody obviously wanted the stock, but then on the other side of oh, that equation, right. someone's mm. selling the stock off to, so the buyer well, can buy it. That's the same bar, and if you look mm. at that, this huge bar, it off opened market. open where the pointer is, went straight up to here, mm -hmm. up to 420, and came right back again on that one bar of volume. Um, I'm not super excited about it at the moment. I, it could be in this accumulation phase for another six months. Um, yeah. Adam, and I think you just got to sit back and wait. And I think you really need to see a sort of a nice, stronger move through some of these levels that Janine mentioned, and then to come back and find some support on that level and then take off again. Mm. I think you're going to get more support then. But yeah. just be patient. That's all I'm thinking of. I think you're so. right. All right, we have a caller on the line, Janine. Uh, welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. You're on with Janine and Dale. Who have I got? There's a Karen. It is Karen. How are you, Dale and Janine? Oh, fantastic. Great, We're almost as good as you are, Karen. That's good. <laughs> Where are you from? Uh, Central Coast, ah, New South Wales. Beautiful part of the world. I wish I was there with you right now. It's perfect up there. You have a question for us tonight? Yeah. I just want your thoughts on ResMed. Yep. Um, I did purchase it yesterday. It was looking really good. Mm -hmm. So I purchased it for myself personally at 24.43 yep. and in my super fund it got in at 24.45. Okay, perfectly. You're looking short, medium, long term for it? Medium to long. Okay, what sort of analysis did you do on it? Um, well, it had gone up, I was using the weekly chart. Yep, yep. And it had gone up um, part the day before it actually the week before, there was a spike up past the highs. Okay, yeah. Then, then this week it went up again. Cool. So I, that's why I got into it cool. yesterday. So, And then, of course, it went up again today. Cool. Well, Janine's got it up. Have you got a stop loss on it before we go? Um, not for the super fun because I can't do that. But yeah. I, I monitor it daily. You can. You and yeah, sorry. For myself, I use basically a th almost a 3 ATR. Okay, gotcha. Perfect. All right, cool. So Janine will probably give you some hints on that anyway, but um, I'd still write a uh, price in the sand, or if you know what I mean. For a your trading super oh, I, Yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. To make sure that. But thank you for calling in, Karen. Janine's got it all up on the screen, so I'm sure she's going to help you out. All right, Karen. Now, um, mm. obviously, on the left-hand side, we've got the monthly chart. And I think, is Karen the cowgirl here? Like, she's been really um, quite aggressive, hasn't she, off that low? It's good to see I think um, it's great. some ladies getting in there, trying to get a bit of gain there. But if you were trading long-term, Well, ladies though, make would, better traders than guys. Yeah. Well, if you were trading long-term, would you trade off that low there? Or would you wait for something else? No, if I did or not, I don't know if I don't get my mouth to work though. If I had done enough technical mm. analysis on it, I'm quite happy to buy off that low for long term. Because look at the volume coming mm. in on this on this weekly chart, a lot of volume coming through here. So I'm not too 
more, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit more aggressive than you are too. Mm, true. Um, for somebody with a super fund, you might just trade off the monthly chart and the monthly chart's not giving us a buy signal well, yet. Well, that's why I was asking that question. Mm. Mm. I figured that's what you were talking about, but I'd still be trading medium term on this stock based on what I'm seeing on that weekly chart because I think that looks really, 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 really nice because mm -hmm. um, it's just this perfect move up. There's your previous peak through here at uh, 2410. Would um, you want volume months. supporting the rise in the last couple of weeks. So we've had two weeks up that have moved through that sideways move, but the volume's been low relative to the previous volume. Yeah, I mean, ideally you'd probably like mm. more volume coming in, but you're seeing obviously a lot, of, a lot of volume through here in this downward move as people jumping out and, you know, mm -hmm. saying, oh, I don't want to stay in this stock. It's fallen quite heavily. Because if you, you know, you look from that point down to there, oh, I just used the wrong tool, but it's fairly big from $35 yeah, down to $21. Huge. Yeah. So you got a lot of people getting out and panicking getting out. Um, and then some a bit of accumulation through here. I like what she's doing. I think mm, she's okay, done a great good job. On you, Karen. And as long as she's got a stop loss on it, I don't have an issue at all. Mm, excellent. Do you have any issues with it? No, I agree with you. As long as you she's just got think a stop she's a loss. Cowgirl. Look, I probably, um, you know, I think she's probably she's a using. She's lovely cowgirl. Though. She's probably working around here somewhere mm. with a stop loss. Mm. That low of twenty two nineteen is yeah. probably as good a place as any to consider. I'd be a bit concerned if it went below that strongly. Cool. All right, Janine, we've now got an email. This one was is from Patricio who asks, hi, Janine and Dale, can you please explain in plain English how options work in the stock market? Also, when I tried to buy BHP shares, the seller's volume is very low. Any reason why? Thanks for the show, Patricio. Um, do you want to explain? Do you want to talk about the, the, um, the options and then I'll talk about BHP? All right, I'll do the options. Basically, to, jeez. Oh, Easiest way to explain options to, for, for you, Patricio, is simply... Is to go to the ASX options, website. Well, that's what I was going <laughs> to say. Go to the ASX website and just type in options, and that'll give you an explanation. But basically, options give you the right, but not the obligation to do something. So if it depends on if you want to trade put and call options. So if you want to trade them, there's one side. And if you want to write options, that's a whole different ballgame again. But trading options means you're buying a contract to do something into the future. So for example, you may think BHP is going up and so you buy a call contract at a certain strike price. So you're buying the right to actually buy BHP at a later date at a certain fixed price that you have locked in onto that contract. So you hope BHP goes, goes above that fixed price, which is the strike price. And once it goes above that, you're in the money. Um, and so you would exercise your right. But if it doesn't get to that point, you wouldn't. And the opposite is right for a put option. Writing options are a whole different ballgame because you just say, how did options work? Writing options is you're the person that creates that contract that's very low risk. Uh, I think 98% of options contracts expire worthless. So trading them higher risk, writing them pretty low risk. But again, go to the ASX website. It's going to get a much more detailed excl um, explanation. Um, I'd have to spend half an hour showing you maps and drawing things to really explain them to you properly. But Yeah, the ASX yeah. have a brilliant brochure. Their options that, brochure they? is brilliant, mm. really brilliant. Yeah, and they have lots of little courses that they run as well, which are mm. also good. So look out for I those. Actually did a, I also did, sorry, I've cut you off. I actually mm. did a podcast only about six weeks ago on derivatives and I talk about options in a lot more depth. So on our Talking Wealth podcast, um, you'll see it there, leverage. I talk about leverage products in the marketplace and part of that is a big spill Is there on anything options. you don't cover? <laughs> you cover um, everything, don't you? I don't cover fashion. Right, okay. That's different, isn't it? Yeah. Well, so, we'll anyway, forgive you for that. Volume on BHP. BHP. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? Because BHP is a big stock. So Correct. we'd have to put it in context with what is being talked about. So I'm, I'm not, there wasn't enough information in that email for me to fully understand that. Well, the only thing I can say is that depending on how they're looking at the volume, so on some broking websites, you've mm -hmm. got the ability to actually expand or compress a volume so you can see individual orders within the one price. Mm -hmm. So if you were looking at those as a breakdown, then it would look like there were lots of little, you know, individual trades mm -hmm. coming up in that volume, in that depth. But if you're looking at the consolidated view, it's a different story. And it could also be depending on when the when mm. they're looking at that information as well. What's Correct, in if you're looking outside of market hours or during trading mm. hours. But it, obviously, Patricia, you're looking at the depth of the market. 
Um, and I'm going to save you a hell of a lot of time. Forget about it completely. I don't know of any traders that really need to look at the depth Especially of the market. Especially with BHP. I mean, Especially it's with in BHP. Top 20 stocks, you, it's a no-brainer. Forget You've got about nothing it. to worry about there. Yeah, mm. forget about the depth of the market altogether, especially with well, those big stocks. Well, it looks like we've got a caller on the line, mm. Dale, and it's Anne. Hello, Anne. How are you this evening? And welcome to the show. Oh, I'm great. Thank you, Janine. And really great that you take my call tonight. Um, I'm interested... Well, I've been listening to a couple of the the uh, podcast that you do with Dana Samuelson oh, yes. on gold and that kind of got me interested in getting involved in uh, gold miners and I was looking at NST mm. and I think I've missed a, a Dow, a uh, trend line entry mm -hmm. and I'm now looking at a Dow entry and I think I've missed that one too. So I just want your opinion on, on what you think about what my options are there. Fantastic. And, and are you doing this as a more short term or is it medium to long term? Short medium is what short I'm thinking medium. on this one. Yeah, okay, great. I think, it's fantastic to yeah. have another lady call into the show and great to see. So do you consider yourself more a trader or because you're short to medium, that tends to be a trader. Do you consider yourself more to be a trader or an investor? No, I think I'm more of an investor, but mm. I'm, I've just finished module three and I'm kind of excited to have a bit of a go at something else. Congratulations. How are you finding it? Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. I find it hard, but I love it. Yep. Yes. Excellent. Yeah, there's a lot to know, but once you know it, it's like anything. It becomes easier, a lot easier, believe me. Yes, thank you. So thank keep you up with that. Delivering All right, Dale, it. Yep. shall we have a look at Northern Star then? Oh, I love Anne. what she's picked. I think it's great. I wouldn't even be too worried about it. If you haven't missed it, Anne, you really haven't. Because basically, if you're looking at trend line, you've missed. I understand that one. But this is the bar you would have entered on last week if you're using the, your other entry method. And currently, the price is right down there where you bought it, would have bought it anyway. But um, I just hang on. on um, just wait. Just wait a little mm. bit. But again, it'd be around the same price as you would have bought anyway. So I do like what she's talking about there. Yeah, I mean, we've seen mm. these gold stocks take off and then mm. flip and reverse so many times over the Correct. past few years. So and I think that's all it's, it's doing. It's good that she's actually probably come in at this time because it's going to be more of a learning experience for her watching. It's not about that she's missed out. Mm. And it's not about that you've missed out. It's about the fact that you're getting this opportunity now. There's no emotion in it, but you just get to watch what's happening. And eventually, when there's a better opportunity that comes up, then, like Dale said, mm. for now, just wait and watch. And when that comes up, I don't have a problem if she wants to get into it as long as she's put a stop loss and everything on mm. it. But she is right. Those Dana Samuelson M uh, interviews for TalkingLot.com. Oh, you and I fight over doing those oh, ones, don't we? I'm um, with you, Anne. I, like, we fight. Um, so, But he's brilliant. He's such an expert. And often, like I was saying, on, I posted a what the, uh, link to the trailer mm. on LinkedIn the other day, and I said often you get people that talk a lot to pretend they're experts, mm. but then you get people like him oh, that are experts. just the real deal. Mm, they you know? are. Yeah, he and is. he just he's knows amazing. what he's talking about, so mm. I love it. But love your take on Northern Star, and I think a good good pick there, Anne, so I think you're doing well, even though you're on Module 3. So wait till Module 4 and 5, you'll really take everything to a whole new level again, so well done. But moving on, uh, yeah, we have our topic tonight, and we share our top 10 ASX growth stocks to buy in 2024. Dale, I cannot speak for you, but I just want the market to go up. I've had enough of this sideways market, I can tell you, and I'm sure that our viewers have as well. And the Australian market is way overdue for the next rise. Well, I must be more impatient than you, Janine, <laughs> as I was over this market about six months ago, mm. I think. And But that said, everyone watching my market reports on Mondays know that I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. <laughs> Now, Janine, for our YouTube viewers, can you tell us what you feel is important for investors in this kind of market? Well, as you saw, oh, there's a few things. <laughs> I don't want to say them on air. The only thing important right now is to be prepared. And by doing this, you'll get the best opportunity to buy the best growth stocks at the start of the next run. Okay, well, that reminds me of a quote by um, American, former American President Abraham Lincoln. He said, I mm. think... Everyone will know who he is. Well, I do think everybody know who he is. Mr. Lincoln said, I will prepare and someday my chance will come. Now, everyone has the opportunity, 
but will you be ready? That's a great question. I don't think we could have put it better, could we? No, it can't. And I think this is what I was talking about yesterday on my market re mm. uh, my, my report, is that often we find investors wait for something to happen mm -hmm. and then jump in too late. Right. So by being prepared, and that's what we've been saying in the last few months on here and on my market report, do your research, learn, get all mm. your ducks in a row. Because How much easier is it if you have prepared? It's just oh, so it's easy. Then, just pull it? the trigger then. Yeah. But too often we see people get FOMO mm. and that's what causes because they see the market already moving because they haven't really got onto it. So Yeah, I, I mean, think, I've had mm. emails from people, you know, wanting information. Like the sh on the show, they're asking us, what do we think of something? Mm. And it's usually after it's run or it's yep. been falling away. Or well, it's been falling away. Yeah, yeah, it's not at that point where it's just about to set up. So when we're looking at watch lists of stocks, we actually have mm. a watch list that says, well, this is two weeks out from triggering or this is four weeks out from triggering and therefore, you know, we need to pay more attention to the ones that are closer to triggering. Mm, I agree mm. with you. Totally agree. All right. Okay. We will help you to be more prepared, just like I have been as this show was planned in October, because all the signs indicate the growth prospects for the market in the coming years are good. Now, we need to remember that the masses focus on negativity. So that begs me to ask the question, what are you focusing on? Well, that's a good question, Janine. Um, and I think we should all ponder the question from time to time as we can also become um, overly positive and suffer from FOMO, as I was just mentioning. But let's move on. So how about we look at the market first? Is that okay? Well, it's a great idea, but we've got something more interesting to start with. No, I, seriously? I can't think of anything or imagine anything more interesting than the market. So you've got me. I've got well, my views. Yes, I want to get into discussing growth forecasts for the market. Now, our regular viewers know that we've been talking about the Australian market leading the next rise ahead of the US market. And we've shared how the US and Australian markets tend to alternate every five years. Well, that's correct. And so it's so important to know. So when we're looking for gross stocks, we want to find companies that will move faster than the market. So what have you found to support your view, Jane? Well, first, we need to take a step back as the Australian economy needs to have the potential for growth. And then we look at the stocks. So let's take a look at this statement from an article I read recently. OK, now, looking at that, it reads, Australia has been a long-term economic outperformer, outpacing the G7 and most other developed nations. Oh, wow. Right. We've been saying Australia is being held back. Now let's take a look at the graph courtesy of the IMF which is on your screen right now. Let's come back from 1985. That's not bad, eh? Yeah, so this is actually a five-year average forecast. So we're looking, mm -hmm. we're looking at um, mm -hmm. 2024 to 2028. Now, this was actually, I'm looking at um, the G7, so Italy, yeah. Japan, France, Germany, UK, Canada, developed, developed markets. markets. Then yeah. we've got the US, the Australian market, and emerging markets. Now, Australia's actually second in line, uh, follow it, you know, emerging markets is first. It's got the highest growth potential. Mm -hmm. But interesting that Australia comes in next. Well, it is, but that's in line with what we're talking about. And this is coming about. from the IMF. It's not, you know, uh, correct. That's, supporting what we're saying. Yeah, it is. And that, but I'm saying that's not unusual for us because obviously mm -hmm. we talked about numerous times about Triumph of the Optimus, mm -hmm. the study of world world markets over 100 years, and Australia's number one. That's right. And people don't believe that. And when I say, I was actually talking about that the other week to a journalist, and I said, the US is like number six or seven on the list. Mm. It's not even one, two or three. Like South Africa and Australia vie for top spot. Yeah, well, oh. I mean, it, the, the rise that we've seen recently in the US mm -hmm. market is significant. It's one of the mm. biggest moves that we've seen. But it'll slow down. It will slow down from here. Yeah. Mm. It will slow down. So there down. you go. So that's interesting. And that's what Dana Samuelson said in his report anyway, the last one with us too, that it was a bit more, going to be a bit more slow down. That's why I thought gold was better. Yep. at this point in time. Yeah, so it's interesting to see how markets, like mm. the sectors in our market, they mm. switch and, and change around in terms of which one's mm. going to be more bullish. So we just, we've got to drill down. So this is like a top-down okay. analysis looking at all of the economies, then looking at the ones that are going to perform best. So obviously Australia and mm. the US are up there with emerging mm. markets. And then from there we say, okay, what are we looking at in Australia? We look at the mm. sectors and mm. then drill down. All right, well, that research is great, Janine, and something... Now, I suggest those watching do as well or do that often because uh, we can often become too myopic in our view and miss this bigger picture. So what else do you want to share with us tonight, Janine? 
Well, I particularly like this caption from the same article. Now it's simple and straight to the point, a bit like me really, which confirms our thoughts on the market. No comment from the back stalls there. No, I'm keeping my mouth shut. The article reads, the domestic equity market is cheap compared to global peers and should benefit from macro outperformance. Now the charts have been showing us, Janine, that conditions are right. Mm -hmm. The masses have been told one thing, and the charts are setting up for an opportunity. Now the market usually is six months ahead of mainstream commentary. So that's why the masses are late to the market boom and to exit major corrections. So what we're saying now is that is that, yeah, that's happening. Exactly. Now you can do your own research into the fundamentals of the stocks, which will lag what the charts show. Now how about <laughs> How about we get into some stocks? That would be fun, wouldn't it? I ask that every week. How about we get into some stocks? <laughs> yeah, one more thing before we do, we've actually got more than 10 stocks to talk about tonight. So we want to make sure that we leave time to do them justice. So we're going to chat about six of the best ones now, and the rest we'll cover for our Talking Wealth viewers later in the show with some bonus content. I call that the Janine Dozen. <laughs> okay. um, anyway, I've, I've, <laughs> that's exciting. But for right now, on your screen is a chart showing our targets for the market. Uh, and what you need to understand is that analysis is fluid. So as we see more data on the chart, we must continue to factor this into our forecast. So each week we review and consider whether to adjust our view. Now this is what traders do. So let's take a look and then we'll get into the stock. So what have we got there? So, so this, this is, is what we just talked forecast. about before. Yep, so okay. you want to get into that more? I just wanted to get into that a bit more. It's in terms of how we think the market could unfold and over what time frame. Mm -hmm. So I talked earlier about the price levels, Yep. right? And I haven't talked really, I just mentioned briefly that it could happen in a couple of years. Yep. But we know that every few years we get some stellar years on the market. We so do. just remember back in 2012, 13, mm -hmm. you know, we, I think I remember back then the market was about 15, 20% 20, 20 up. It depends on the stocks that you're holding, what you got during that um, year. Mm -hmm. But I think that there's going to be another one of those coming up. And it may not be 2024 that we get that big one. It could be 2025 where we end up with a bigger, much bigger return on our market. So that's what I'm thinking right now. I think it'll gather momentum in 2024. Then yeah. I think 2024. Five will be the bigger year. Yeah. So yeah. if we if we have a look at that, we we're expecting to see mm. that perhaps over the next year we could get um, a move on its way towards this level, but you yeah. know not too soon. And then within the next two to four years, I think we'll be we'll be breaking that ten thousand point mark and onwards. Yeah. Mm. Well, we've got to have our next crash. So we're mm. heading towards our next market peak for the next crash. Yeah. Well, we could even go to eleven thousand points over yeah. that time. I've got another target well above that, but I didn't want to share all of it tonight. No. But I'm now, what you're saying now is the yeah. safest time to get into the market in eighteen months, two years time. It probably won't be. That's right. Of course, I'm not saying just to pile mm. into stocks. It's, no. it's about picking some of these growth stocks and balancing them out in your mm. portfolio. But mm. Make sure you've got some nice big stocks like we're going to show you tonight. Okay, cool. All right, so, so, yeah, so should what? we have a look at some stocks now? Oh, I'm, I've been waiting for that for the last five minutes. All right. Now, first of all, we've got, Mark, we've got the healthcare mm. sector. So mm. what I've looked at is I've looked at a couple of stocks across different sectors. Mm. So healthcare's obviously been sold off significantly. So that's going to be awesome. one on the list. Doesn't that, doesn't that pattern look amazing? So we mm. just need to wait now because um, well, that. So, so what Dale's getting excited about is this is actually... Um, something that's quite common in analysis, but if you see these sort of tight patterns on the monthly chart, they can be even stronger than what you might expect when you're looking at a short-term mm. move on the market. And I think that's the challenge, isn't it? Because a lot of people tend to look at these short-term moves mm. and ne wouldn't necessarily even see what was happening on that monthly time frame. No, they don't. That's the, that's the mistake I see most traders do, especially beginners. They get mm. into that microscopic view thinking that's where they've got to be. Yeah. And they've got to be trading lots all mm -hmm. the time and they've got to get into those daily charts and intraday charts and live data and everything else, but you don't have to. Exactly. Make your trading easier. Yeah, well, look, this is going to really blow your mind. So mm -hmm. have a look at this here. Um, I'm just taking this off. I just want to show you. This is hidden secret here. So I'm just, oh, hang on. There it is. 1,176% from the low of the GFC. Whoa. So CSL actually bottomed early in the GFC, but then mm -hmm. it actually fell over further on to the right hand side. But that was side. the best performing stock. It was the uh, best. Right up. Yeah, until, it was. CSL mm. and Macquarie were mm. the best, some of the best performing stocks. So 
It doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to be the best performing stocks over the next five years Correct, out of the yeah. lot that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. But there's a high probability that we'll see some pretty good growth out of them going forward. Mm. So, you know, it may not repeat that 1,176 patterns tell you that that's the case. However, you you know, looking ahead for CSL, I'd say, you know, we're going to be over 400, you know, oh, yeah. easily. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. I agree with all that. It's looking awesome at the moment. I mm. do love this stock. But is it the um, right time to buy now? I don't no. think so. I think it's a little bit too early. Why is that? Because stocks can always bounce and fall out of the bottom of these patterns and head down south before they find support. So that's what really we're just mitigating against. It's all about that risk management, not being greedy and just saying, OK, let someone else have that little short term rally, the mm. short term profit takers. Yeah, I think we need to get something more I mean, solid. We haven't had confirmation of this low, which is the same mm. as this low over here you're talking about through there. Yeah, that's it's exactly right. the same low. So once we get confirmation that that low is the low, um, then you might get more aggressive traders entering the stock, mm. but more conservative traders will wait till it gets to the top of this pattern and get into that, just depending yep. on what you're wanting. But this is a good stock you can put in a super fund or a good blue chip fund and do for medium to longer term. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, now, FMG is 77 billion. It's in the material space. I also think it's good mm. to have a mixture of stocks from different sectors. And once mm. the market starts taking off, you're going to be finding that there'll be stocks popping out in every I'll sector. I'll run out of money before I run yeah, out of stocks that's right. to buy. So it's like, where do you want to spend most of your time? Mm. Well, the top 50 is probably going to be mm. the place to spend most of your time when you're looking for these opportunities. But there will be the odd ones outside of that. Sometimes inside that 100 or just outside the 100, you can also find some really good ones. Mm. So Fortescue looks really interesting. It's taken off recently, but I'd say it's more likely to have a little bit of a breather in the oh, short term, that too. given how many weeks it's been up. So it's probably going to come back and test that recent rise, particularly as it's gone to that all time high. But um, looking at this is another example of one of these. Look what where we were during the GFC, November 2008, way down here. So you might not have thought that FMG was going to go where it went to. So let's just have a look at that. So it was over 2000 percent. Um, rise to that high where it's recently made an all-time high and that was 2021 in about, in about 12 years yeah that's not too shabby is it isn't it mm. you'd be disappointed if you got that wouldn't you wouldn't you so that's a that's an example mm. of what some of these growth stocks can do now Macquarie is another good one so I put the market cap on each of these ones did you want to talk about this one anymore before I well, go I think forward? it's important to look at some of the stuff on this chart and actually just say well whilst you like this stock at this point in time mm -hmm. for growth because this is one of the best growth stocks on our market too but there are yeah. times when you're in it and there's times when you shouldn't be in it exactly um, and obviously this sort of period through here between gfc and that low there in 2016 good traders would have been able to trade that but it's not necessarily one that if you're an active investor to have mm. so you've got to pick the right time and, and looking at this at the moment you're saying this is the all-time high here um, at 26.40, then we got 26.58, and last month we hit 25.81. So it's coming up to a very major resistance level here. So if I whack that on Look, there, I think I think the next couple of years are going to be fairly forgiving mm. for people mm -hmm. because when that market gets the market gets the momentum behind it. Um, if you've bought something that was probably a bit of a dog stock, it's probably going to get a bit of an upwind, upwind but then it's about mm. you won't have enough capital, like Dale was saying before, to buy all the good ones. So yeah. this is where you're going to have to make some tough decisions and decide what in your portfolio doesn't is unlikely to represent the best growth and where am I best to put that money. And that's, you know, without having the knowledge, it's not easy to make those calls. Well, you've got to decide whether, you know, which apple is an apple that mm. you want to eat. And that's really what it's about. What you're saying is you, you need to have some rules and around picking which stock that you're going to be into because I guarantee you'll run out of money before you run out of stocks. And Doesn't how do we how get to food? That's what I really want to know. We're talking about the stock market oh, here. I wasn't if, talking about if you chocolate. Talked about cho I was talking about apples, thinking that was going to distract you, but no. You I still... was really trying hard, but then I no. just couldn't help myself. So at the moment on Fortescue, it's getting really close mm. to that all time. I, what I'm suggesting is. Just be careful at this point in time because it could That's shoot straight advice. through yeah. that mm. or we could find a hit that comes back a little bit exactly. and then goes through it. So just be careful. That's all Great I wanted point. to say all on right. this. Now you can move on to okay. Macquarie if you yep. like. So that's the that's the two two of the bigger ones mm. and Macquarie as well is another one. Um, market cap $65 billion, and it's obviously in the financials space. Mm. 
Now, it's actually done something similar. So this is where people go, oh, ah, This is looking you know, awesome too. Um, imagine this one. So this has gone over 1,000 as well in that rise from the GFC. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I haven't got magic. I can't just say abracadabra expand. I have to press the button. Can we keep moving on? <laughs> I, I could have I bought my one. I know it's your last show for the you year because you're not going to be here on. next week. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be santering on my own and you're the Santa queen. Yeah, look, the day that I get you to wear a Santa hat, I think that, you know, I'll mm. be cheering. Yeah, well, I hope you don't die before that happens. <laughs> oh, okay. Geez. Thank you for that. <laughs> All just right. Just watch next week's show and you'll see what happens. Yep. 1370. So that's a nice little number, mm -hmm. isn't it? Out of that low in the GFC. And you know, the mind boggles as to where these sort of stocks could head to, given that the market's got to make an, a move up. So, mm -hmm. you know, when we're looking at this, some of our students are thinking maybe it's already the top. We're seeing the top here just based on the patterns unfolding that we're seeing that, that Macquarie potentially could take out this low. And it's possible. It is possible, it, but it I think it's it. looking really good at the moment. It's setting up, isn't it? So, you know, from a medium to long term perspective, you'd want to at least see it get above this 185. But if you're looking, um, if you've got some really good rules and you know how the stock mm. works, then you might be able to mm. get in earlier. So it's just a question mm. of weighing all of that up. Now, imagine that before you mm. close that down and you did it again. Well, it's been sideways so, look, well, for so I long now. That. But imagine you took this COVID mm -hmm. meltdown out of this whole chart. Would you be more excited again? Um, I don't think that really changes it for me in terms of the COVID meltdown. So it's still exciting to you? It's still exciting to me because it's a big stock that's okay, proven well, that just, it's a growth stock yeah. over time. Just... Okay, so it's an exciting proposition one. I do like it. <laughs> okay. I think, I look, I look, this one, these ones are all on my watch list. Excellent, so there you have it. Dale's telling you what's on his watch list. Mm. All right, so the my next... My personal watch list, yeah. The next one is a little one, uh, Webjet, mm -hmm. uh, market cap 2.5 billion. Now, I chose this one. It's a little mm -hmm. bit more volatile. It's probably could mm -hmm. be considered a little bit of a dark horse, potentially. Yes. But we still need to see, um, you know, consumer confidence increase. We've got, you know, higher interest rates. But then that didn't stop people from doing lots of travel before the GFC when interest rates were 6 yeah, to 7%. Yeah, but the interest rates are biting at the moment. Mm. So who is travelling and who uses Webjet to travel? Well, to you know, the flights? fact is that the, the people who have loads of money are not the ones who are have, you know, a lot of borrowing. Mm -hmm. So the older generation who travel, who do a lot of the travelling, the, they go on cruises, yeah, for Do example. they book them through Webjet or Flight Centre? Well, there's a lot of people now who are pretty up with all the, the internet. They're not, um, they're able to use Webjet okay. and they think it's easy to use. How about we look use. at the chart? How's that? Tell me what you like so about the chart. So are you saying that only young people use Webjet? I'm saying have a look at the chart. He won't answer now. Mm. All right, I'm, Webjet. That was a Janine answer. All right, I'm going to give you my technical view. How's that? Good idea. Good idea. Okay, let's just take a big look at the history of this stock. Now, you know, I think this is way oversold. That's just my mm. opinion. A huge reaction to what's happened during COVID. And we're only, if we look at the range of where we're at, uh, let's just find our little... So it's fallen, it fell about 80%. So when any stock falls sort of in that sort of 75 to 90% to zone, we know that there's potential for it to take off. We're only about halfway up of recovering that. I love it. Um, I just think that there's huge potential in it. Mm. We just need to be patient and it needs to get back above $7 for a start. It needs to have some really nice rules cool. to be able to buy it. Mm. All right. So what's next? All right. You're really pushing it now, aren't you? Yeah. Now, West Farmers, which I haven't got the market capitalisation up there, um, you can see that over time, people think that this is a more boring stock, which it has they been. They do, but it's a great stock. It's still a great stock, but it great has company. gone through periods of sideways consolidation, a year, a couple of years where it does nothing. But then again, if we look at what happened here, no, I haven't put it on there either, but I'm going to just put that on there for you as well. If I go down to the low in the GFC, up to that high. It's not the thousands of percent like my first three mm. that I was really mm. excited about, but you know, 500% to the all time high is a really good level of growth. So I'm not expecting that same sort of percentage return out of West Farmers, but I think the, the space that it's in, we will see a comeback in that area. I think it's a great years. stock for a super fun blue chip mm. portfolio long term. I think it's going to really yep. push this And there's plenty of room high. between there and the all-time high. I think it's mm. going to push that in the next year or so. Okay, so we've got the next one, which mm -hmm. is JB Hi-Fi. Now, 
Yes. You know, a lot of these retail stocks were absolutely pummeled. Look, Harvey Norman got it um, was you know sold planned. off heavily. But JB Hi-Fi has actually held up well and, you know, mm. they've had a good season. It would be interesting to see how they go through the festive season, but at the moment it's still very much sideways. There is a risk to the downside, and I'm going to just show mm. you this short-term view. This low here, if JB Hi-Fi takes that out, that's where the risk is with this stock right now. But mm. if it keeps going up, just have a look at the support yeah. across there, which is huge for preparing for... It's almost like it's spent... the close to the same amount of time that it has going sideways after the COVID, that peak up here, say August 2020, it's gone sideways for a while. We're getting close to that point after this low here in June 2022, where it's running out of time to keep going sideways. Yeah. Mm. I think once consumer confidence really starts to get a little bit more Recovers. positive, mm. I think this thing will take off like a rocket. And, and we should see that happening in the second half of 2024. Oh, I absolutely. Think. Mm. Perfect. So that's one for the watch list. Well, that's it for our topic tonight. We've still got plenty of stocks to go through. But before we get into these, for those watching on YouTube, you can watch all of tonight's show, plus the exclusive content on TalkingWealth.com. The members only bonus content includes a more in-depth approach a lot, and lots more stocks and more detailed answers to your questions. You also get to watch Dale's weekly Australian stock market report where he shares his view on the market and where opportunities may arise and gain access to hundreds of amazing interviews with industry experts from around the globe. So what are you waiting for? Secure your free seven day subscription by visiting talkingwealth.com. Now, Janine, last week we mentioned that we would be announcing something special for those who are not Talking Well subscribers. That's nice. And to give them a Christmas present. So here is our Christmas present to you. First, you need to watch next week's show because Janine won't be around and Pedro will be back um, as it is our last show for the year. Now, on that show, we will give you details on how to get your present which is that we have created a special membership for you to see selected videos, including several full episodes of this live Australian stock market show and also my weekly Australian stock market report, along with interviews of experts that I've personally selected for you, including Dana Samuelson, who we talked about a little bit earlier. Now you gain access to this for free and all you need to do is supply your name and email address so you can keep your credit card in your back pocket. Now remember, you need to watch next Tuesday's show for the details. Moving on, we will get into some more questions. So now is your time to pick up your phone. Give us a call on 0392909988. That's 0392909988. Or you can text the number on your screen. Whilst we wait for your call, let's get into our next email. Now it is time we get into our next question, which is from Anthony. Hello, Dale and Janine. Thanks for the show and the course. I'm a student currently in module three. I have a stock RSG that recently jumped 10% in a single day and volume also increased. And I was wondering why. While I was researching on market index, I noticed another stock NFL also had a large rise and saw there was a query raised by the Australian Securities Exchange. Now that's interesting. My question is, do these happen often and what rules would you use to get out? For example, if you were in NFL, do you say, great, I made a good profit and get out, or do you wait and see what the charts do? Me, I'm taking the exit. Thanks, Anthony. <laughs> good on you, Anthony. Um, great email. Enjoyed that one. It is, but I wouldn't do what Anthony did. Take the exit? Yeah. Did you look at the chart? No, I haven't looked at the chart. It just doesn't matter what the chart is. It does. No, why? Well, you said this was, you know, we didn't need to look at the chart, but I actually think we no, do. No, I don't need to look at the chart to make the answer. That's what I meant. Right. Because to me, just because a stock gaps up and jumps up doesn't mean I'm going to just jump out and take the profit. It's mm. about having... You only ever buy and sell on rules. It's simple. You don't buy and sell on speculation or I think this or... Oh, geez, I've made 20%, so I'll just get out now. You actually always have rules around that. Now, yeah, it does happen quite often, actually, that stocks will jump and gap up. Occasionally, um, ASIC will question what's going on and say, well, what happened here? Um, whether, uh, for example, it could be a company, and I heard a story today from a gentleman I know who was with a company who's recently just dumped up in price, 
and they were excited about something happening and he said you need to put the company into a trading halt until the announcement because when a company is doing something exciting, the people in the company know. And if that's going to materially affect the stock mm, market price, point. they have to keep their mouth shut until mm. the, the market knows. But yep. those people know. So sometimes mm. they get overexcited and start telling their mums and dads and friends and then they start buying and then the stock goes up and then it gaps right up. And that's when ASIC comes in and goes, what happened? Mm. Because they want to make sure that we have an efficient market but also a really fair market. So it does happen and occasionally mm. okay. a, a stock or the directors or the, 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 the board, you know, do get a slap on the wrist for what they've done, but generally it's pretty good. But You'd be pretty yeah. excited if you saw that sort of jump on a stock that well, I've you just would got be. there. Absolutely. The only thing I'd say is, look how illiquid it is. Why would you yeah. even be in it? Mm. Well, that's true too. That's the other question. Because it is a bit stock dependent, isn't it, too? Some of the oh, decisions you you're make. you're hugely exposed to that. Mm. Um, but that does happen media. on some of those stocks mm. too, because they might come out with a slightly better earnings report or they might get FDA approval for mm. something or, you know what I mean, and all of a sudden they go, boof. But how many times have you seen that where stocks said, oh, we, we looks like we're going to get FDA approval Look, for our drugs? we've seen so many of those shares that over time, mm. if we just wait for a pattern to form on the chart, eventually you'll get a better entry and a safer mm. entry if you wanted to trade something that so risky. So would have you jumped out of this if once that announcement it took off? Look, probably on the basis that, that you can't trade that because mm -hmm. there's no history, but no, look, because you've got to just treat it as it is. It's not something that you're going to be able to trade easily from that chart. And you're going to find more of those smaller stocks will do this gapping mm -hmm. rather than the big ones too. Yeah. So. For a stock that I couldn't see, this is like being blind to me. Mm -hmm. I'm it? blind with this stock. I've got no idea where it's going to go or what it's going to do because yep. there's just not enough history. So for me, I wouldn't have bought it for a start. But if mm -hmm. I just say, for example, someone gifted me the shares, I would just take my money and go, like he did. And trade something mm. that's more consistent. Yep. Yeah. But it's interesting how the difference between a professional trader mm. trades and how people that, uh, and I don't know whether well, Anthony's, what his experience is, but mm. you know, you're looking at what, what a professionals do as opposed to others do. And it's yeah, well, interesting. Well, I think that his gut feel is telling him that mm. this is risky. It's basically why he's getting out. Probably. So therefore, like whereas a lot of people would get greedy and they will just hold on for, to see if it goes higher. Yep, hmm, that makes sense. Mm. Cool. All right, that's my answer. All right, thank you very much, you did very Anthony. Well. Moving on, remember to hit that like button and show your support for our channel by clicking subscribe. It helps spread the message of how crucial getting the right education is. Cool. Now make sure you pick up the phone and ring double nine uh, nine two nine zero double nine double eight. Well, Janine would love to chat to you now. We got another email. And this one is from Les. Um, but also, if you want to chat to us, remember, call in now on 9290 But if you're a bit shy, you can email us at info at wealthwithin.com.au so we can answer your question in next week's show. Now, this question is from Les, and Les says, Hi, darling Janine. Trust you well, and as always, love the show, even if I cannot watch it live. I have two questions tonight, so I hope you don't think I'm being greedy. No, that's okay, Les. The first question is about your weekly hot stock tips. I would love, um, as I'm sure other viewers would, to see how these stocks have performed since you picked them. Um, perhaps you could show their charts and offer comments on why they did or did not play out as predicted. Um, the second question relates to the bars you show on the Optima chart. So could you please explain why they are green, yellow, blue, and also what's the relevance of inside and outside bars? I know where we got yellow from. We don't have yellow bars on the chart. Mm, not sure. No, no, we don't. But look, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it, how when we're putting up stock tips, the way that people look at that, because we're only looking at one snapshot in time. Mm. And Les, we've always got to have an upside and a downside view. So if the stock turned and went below a particular level, then you know we're not excited about it anymore. It can just change like that. Mm. If the stock takes off, then it may get to our target. It may fall short. And you'll, look, I think he's right. It'd be really interesting to go back to a few of those, and we will bring some of those previous ones up again when we you mm. know, get to that next year. But I think a lot of people think they're, we're telling people to buy. They're not. Yeah, They're that's just right. saying, here's a stock that could be doing that something. It's a good stock. looks interesting that yeah. we think that could be so an opportunity. If it was a buy report where we're pushing out, these are the buys, then mm. okay, well then why didn't they do really well as a buy? That's but we're a not really saying that point. with any of them. Mm -hmm. We've never said buy this stock. Yep. Um, so showing them and going over them, it doesn't serve a lot of purpose either. Mm, true. Because as you said, the more data comes along, the more we might change our opinion on those stocks. Mm. Um, You've always got to be flexible, that's yeah. the point. 
you know, so it's about keeping things real. Obviously, the bar's on the mm -hmm. chart. So bars, the green bar means it's up, means uh, it's up bar. Red bar means it's a down bar. Yeah, a blue bar means it's an outside bar. Um, and if you have an inside bar, it's the same colour as the bar on the left of it. So, um, but you'll learn all that in our course. I think Les said, he sent me another email this week and said he's going to be doing a course, I think he said, in the next year. So you learn all of that in that course. But we also teach that in our real beginner's course, mm. our trading mental course, all the different colour codings of the bar. You won't see these colour codings very much. You mm. won't see them. These are particular type of colour coding that we have that I don't see anybody else teach. No, we decided on that. They mm. are really, really good to help people understand a lots of different mm. analysis. So just be careful when you're looking at charts online. They're generally either one colour or they colour code the colour of the bar on the closing price. Um, so if it closes lower than open, it'll be a red bar. If it closes higher than it open, it'll be a green bar. So that often tricks a lot of people. It does. But our bars aren't colour coded that way. And I won't go into how they're colour coded mm. um, because it'll take too long. Um, but um, that's all it's I a really mean. good question. Though. Green means up, red mm. means down. Blue means outside, and if it's the same colour as the preceding bar, it's an inside bar. Simple. Fantastic, Dale. It looks like we've got another text, and this one's from Jack. Um, hello, Jack. Great to have you texting into the show, and you've texted in about Telstra, long-suffering holder. Look, my commiserations. When is it going to move up again? He's asking. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we're looking at the chart right now. There's a possibility it could do that very soon, but we would need the market as a whole to take off to help Telstra have that momentum. Mm. There's also a risk to the downside, as there is at any time on any stock. Um, so there's a possibility that it could fall. So that's what we've just mm. got to watch. But if it reverses and moves up from here, then he's not going to be saying, when's it going up anymore? He'll be able to celebrate a little bit. Well, he is. The thing is, it's one of those... Telstra's disappointing me at the moment, too, because yeah. I thought it would be it's a, just a plot on a nice, steady moment, isn't it? uptrend, but it's not. And I think it's just a product of the market mm. right now that there's not a lot of positivity in our marketplace. Consumer sentiment is not there. Mm. And I think that's just the reason why Telstra's not moving at the moment, but I still think Look, I think it was their bullish. decision not to be pressured by the institutions to break up the company, and that's mm. my view on it but look you know I think that the CEO is doing like some really good things so I'm really excited about Telstra going forward. Mm. Oh, look I am too and I think it looks good. Did you want to look at the chart at all? Uh, look just probably um, mm. just for a little bit if we yeah. just look at the well, monthly chart. Good. Yeah we just look at the monthly chart. I'm surprised just, you didn't want to look at it. You know if you looked at this chart you could see that there's huge potential. There's huge it? potential. It's just in short that. term. Long term you know short term it's down a little bit but mm. long term this has got to be a good opportunity for investors paying a reasonable dividend for people who like dividend paying it's, not going, a, yeah. it's not one that's going to take your shirt that's right um so i like it from that point of view great one for super funds great one for blue chip portfolios um not so good for traders at the moment no. but that will change yeah so look um someone once said to me oh look you know i was looking at telstra's vo um you know change in in the market on any day it doesn't move much no, it doesn't. You know, and that's but the interesting can. thing, isn't it? It can, but it, mm. often it doesn't. And so because of that, it can look yeah. quite boring. But some, you want a few stocks in your portfolio that are boring, that just bring in dividends, and then eventually it'll take off and resume its trend. 164. 162% mm. between November 2010 and February 2015. You'd be happy with that return over that period of time. And if we go even to more recently from October 2020 to the recent high, that's sixty seven percent. You know, between as so, I said, between October twenty twenty to um, June twenty twenty three. So that's where do bad. you see Telstra going to trading to? Look I look I really do think um, as long as it doesn't fall below that that three sixty two and I don't necessarily think it will, mm. but it may. Um, but I think once it finds a bit of support and starts to move up, I think it's it'll start heading through to this level up here at that six nearly seven dollar mm -hmm. mark through there. And I think yeah. it'll just be really nicely plotting up that way but if you look at um you know telstra look at the angle that it sort of moves on to that that sort of angle if i can grab that and bring it over well the short term moves more recently have been a bit like that it follows the angle so look at that mm. see look at that see look at that it follows the angle so if you whack that onto there yep looks that good, would be it? if it if, <laughs> if this is the low i'm mm -hmm. not saying it is but that would be the angle that roughly it would go up on and so that's a nice little angle as i said it's a nice mm steady moving stock it's just been the last couple of years like most stocks 
it's been going sideways. Yep. So I, agree. I think once it starts to move off, and especially once it moves through that 446, I think it'll start to really gather. Mm. You know, it'll have a red bull underneath it. So and go. because it's had those nice trends in the mm. past, but it hasn't had a history of those long trends, mm. like some of the stocks we've seen, Macquarie and CSL, mm. would you call this one a growth stock? No. Mm. Not at the moment. No, but this is, I would call this a foundational stock, mm -hmm. like your like West Farmers, bank. like your banks, those sorts mm. of stocks that you'd need to put in uh, one or two or three of those into your portfolio for foundation of your portfolio, mm -hmm. just to take out a little bit of the volatility, but give you a nice steady growth so your portfolio doesn't get killed. All too often we see t um, people put way too many sort of high growth type stocks in their portfolio. Or stocks outside the and 200. And it kills their returns because yep. you're not going to get all of them running up at the same time mm. and some of them just fall out of bed. That's true. Um, and they turn a good trade into a good investment mm. or a bad investment, mm -hmm. um, should I say. True. Um, and so that's what you see. But anyway, I do like Telstra. It's just annoying at the moment, isn't it? Like it's like that little brother that just keeps going, can, you, can I go with you? Really? Yeah, it's like Were that. you that little brother? Yeah, I was that person. <laughs> I used to do that to my brother. But anyway, thanks, Jack, for your text, and we hope you've, we've helped you. I wish we could have better news. Now, we also hope we enjoyed or you enjoyed our show. Remember to show your support for us by commenting below this video after the show because we'd love to hear your favourite part. Also, give us a big thumbs up. It helps new people discover these videos and we really would appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel so that you know when we go live now for those watching by talking wealth stay tuned for the bonus content we promised in next week's show we get into the top five mining stocks for growth and dividend income in 2024 we'll also answer your questions and so much more so make sure you put next tuesday night show on your calendar make sure you give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as always thank you for joining us but for now goodbye good luck and good trading